Hello, good day and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to look at the shut door doctrine of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Right? No. This shut door doctrine, right? It is connected to the bridegroom theory. So if you had not if you have not watched my two videos, part one and part two, on the bridegroom theory, I suggest that you do so before you watch this video. And of course, both the bridegroom theory and this shut door doctrine, both of them together are connected to their core doctrine. As I've said before, most of their doctrines are connected to the core doctrine, which is the investigative judgment and the cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary. And as you have seen with all my videos thus far, that each of them has a connection to it, you'll see that it is the same with the shut door doctrine. And I must say that the shut door doctrine is one of their most embarrassing teachings out of all the teachings that they have. And you're going to see why it's one of their most embarrassing when I begin to go through it in this video. Now fortunately for this video there won't be much scripture reading, right? We'll look mostly at, 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 at the doctrine itself but there, there won't be much scripture that, that we'll have to go into right in order to dissect this theory now with no further ado let us get down to it okay so what i'm going to do now i'm going to read a vision i'm going to post whatever i read as well in the description here right so i'm going to read i'm going to read this vision here on the shut, the shut door doctrine. Hold on, give me a second here. So here goes. This is taken from the book, a sketch of the Christian experience and views of Ellen G. White. And the year of this publication is 1851, right? I know to my viewers, um, I've never said this before, but when you're really examining Ellen White Risings, it is necessary for you to see the year when things are written, right? Because she changes her mouth ever so often, and if you're not looking at the year when things are said, you won't notice the change there. You understand? And so you have to look at the year whenever she says certain things. So this is written um, at public published at 1851 and here is a vision that was that she got on March 24th 1849 which happens to be Sabbath a Sabbath day of their reckoning right now the vision reads we had a sweet and very interesting meeting with the Virgin at Topsham Topshan May. The Holy Ghost has poured out upon us, and I was taken off in the spirit to the city of the living God. Then I was shown the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ relating to the shut door could not be separated, and that the time for the commandments of God to shine out with all their importance and for God's people to be tried on the Sabbath truth was when the door was open in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary where the ark is containing the ten commandments this door was not open until the mediation of jesus was finished in the holy place of the sanctuary in 1844 then jesus rose up and shut the door in the holy place and opened the door in the most holy place and passed within the second veil where he now stands by the ark and where the fate of Israel now reaches. I saw that Jesus had shut the door in the holy place, and no man can open it, and that he had opened the door in the most holy, and no man can shut it. And here she quotes Revelation 3, verse 7 to 8, as a means of support of the open and shut door. Right? And that since Jesus had opened the door, in the most holy place which contains the ark, the, command, the commandments have been shining out to God's people and they have been tested on the Sabbath question. 
already you can see what I've been saying to you that every one of their doctrines is connected to this investigative judgment and cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary. But here she's talking now about the commandments of God and people being tried on the Sabbath question. Right? So, because it's the source of error, you find that everything that is connected to it automatically becomes erroneous. You understand? Now, before I even read further, she quotes Revelation 3 verse 7 and 8 to support her theory. And this is just one of the many scripture passages which she takes out of context to squeeze in her, 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 her 1844 theory. Now, Revelation, Revelation, Revelation 78, it reads, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says, He that is holy, he that is true, he that had the key of David, he that open it, and no man shut it, and shut it, and no man open it. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and has kept my word, and has not denied my name. So she's using this to support her opening and shut door theory. Because Jesus says, he opens door, he, open, he, he set before he, the, you an open door, and no man can shut it. Right? And he says that he open, he open it, and no man shut it, and shut it, and no man open it. She's using this to, to, to support her shut door, open and shut door theory. But there's a simple way to refute that argument. Just read a little further down uh, um, onwards and, and you'll refute it. Look at what verse 9 onwards says. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come and worship before thy feet. And to know that I have loved thee, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man can take thy crown. Right? Now, Jesus is saying to the church of Philadelphia, that because that, that I'm going to make the, them that are at the synagogue of Satan come and worship before before their feet so that they will know that, 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 that he loves them also because they have kept the word of his patience he will keep them from the hour of temptation that will come upon uh, up, up on the earth to try all that dwell upon the earth right so this this application is of this these passages is for the last days right and not at 1844 no the messages to the seven churches are symbolic in a sense that these the each of these churches shows the state of what god's church will be like in the last days some church will be like philadelphia some church will be like the laodicea some churches will be like that church and the other churches you understand each different churches will be a resemblance of these churches You'll have some that are that, that, that are a perfect church, right? Remember you now, if, if you do the study on, on your own, on the seven churches, there was one church, I don't remember which one that is, that received no rebuke from Christ, but only commendations, right? But, but, right? So there will be some church that bear that resemblance. Now what Seventh-day Adventist church do, what Ellen White does to squeeze this in with investigative judgment, she makes she makes each of these churches to, to 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 be relevant at a certain time period so one church the the, the 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 church the church at the body of christ will resemble one church at one period of time and then at another period of time they resemble another church and then another period of time they resemble another church so during um, um their time they will say that this was the time of the philadelphia Right, dear time represents Philadelphia, and the last days represents Laodicea. That's how they that's how they, they interpret the seven churches in order to squeeze in this one with their theory. But guess what? If one really looks at the seven churches, they'll see that they are not talking about different time periods when, when the body of Christ will, uh, um, will, will, will resemble. They are all representative of the last days. 
each church, each different church will be a resemblance of one of the seven churches. Right? That makes, if you really look into it, that makes far more sense than to reason that each of them represents different time periods. If an Adventist wants to say that this represents the time of, the, of their disappointment, this, um, the Philadelphian church, they have to completely take the passages out of context. And if they reason it that way, there's, there's one big problem that, they, that, 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 they, that they'll end up in. One, they were not spared from temptation that should come upon all the earth to try all the world. They, this is telling you know, that the church of Philadelphia will be covered from all the temptation that will, that, that will, come, upon, will, will come upon the earth. They were not, for, for, for this did not happen in their time where temptation came upon all the world and they were covered, they were sheltered from it. That is supposed to happen to the church of Philadelphia. So if they want to apply this to their time, they have to completely take the, uh, take, 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 take the passages out of context in order to do so. Right? Which is not a, a, a good thing to do with the Bible. So thus, I show from this that this church, the, the, the seven churches are representative of the last days. No different time period. And so the church of Philadelphia is not representative of their time period when they make their, their, their little mistake. It has nothing to do with 1844 and their shut door, shut door doctrine. Right? Contextually, it has nothing to do with it. Now, let me continue on the shut door theory. Here she, she goes on to say, I saw that the present test on the Sabbath could not come until the mediation of Jesus in the holy place was finished and he had passed within the second veil. Therefore, Christians who fell asleep before the door was opened in the most holy, when the midnight cry was finished at the seventh month, 1844, and had not kept the true Sabbath, no rest in hope, for they had not the light and the test on the Sabbath, which we now have, since the door was open. I saw that Satan was tempting some of God's people on this point, because so many good Christians have fallen asleep in the triumphs of faith and have not kept the true Sabbath, they were doubting about it being a test for us now. So Ellen White had faced this dilemma in her time where persons are saying that if this thing about the Sabbath is true, how is it that no one was keeping it before? All the great reformers and the notable scholars, John Luther, John, Wyc um, John Wycliffe, Martin Luther should say, John Knox, John Calvin, and, and, and so many others, none of them kept Sabbath, right? None of them, the church was originally, most of them were worshipping on Sunday. So this was posed to her as to what will happen to those persons. And according to this supposed vision that she get, they rest in hope for they had not a true light of the Sabbath. This is her excuse for, for, uh, 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 um, for, 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 for her Sabbath, her Sabbath theory. D.M. Conrad noted this in his book as well. Right, he noted this in his book as 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 well, right? About about the Sabbath when, when when he challenged Adventism and asked them, saying that if this thing is true, how is it that no one was keeping it before? So this is what Ellen White Ellen White gets a vision to settle the argument. And this is how she do she does things things, you know. Whenever she has she's in a dilemma, she just miraculously gets some vision and that vision will settle the argument for her. Yeah, that is how she, she, normally, she normally does her thing. I'll read from, from, from D.M. Conrad's book. Chapter, chapter 16, page 299. Here's what he says. If Sabbatians are right and the Sabbath Christian, then the whole Christian church has broken the Sabbath for the last 1800 years and has kept Sunday, a popish institution, the mark of the beast in its stead. During, the, during these long ages, all the holy men, martyrs, reformers, commentators, historians, and Christian scholars, with all their seeking of God, searching the Bible and studying history, never discovered this great mistake. It is reasonable to believe that the entire church, during all its history, has been trampling upon one of God's most holy commandments. Can it be that the wrath of God is now to be poured out upon the church for keeping the same day that all others have kept for 1800 years? 
Would God have blessed the reformers and his church as he has if Sunday keeping is such a fearful crime against God as is now claimed? No, just to think that the whole um, Church of Christ immediately after the death of the apostles should fall into this fearful sin and error and practice this crime without rebuke during the entire history of the church till just a few days before Jesus comes then only a few find it out and change. According to the Seventh-day Adventists, Luther, Convin, Knox, Wesley, with all the Church of Christ for hundreds of years, committed two fearful sins each week of their lives. They broke the Holy Sabbath, the most important commandment in the Decalogue, and kept Sunday the mark of the beast. Yet God has let the whole thing go on without any protest, till the last minute of time, and now everybody who does not accept this new light is to be hopelessly damned for doing what Christians generally have always done. In all candor, this is a pretty big pill to swallow. So this is what Liam Canwright is reasoning now to the seven to, to the seventh Adventist Church. For hundreds of years the Christian church was worshipping on Sunday, majority of them, and you can find that in history. Every one of them in all the protests that the reformers protest about about the, the, the things that Rome, Rome was doing. It would have been a perfect opportunity for the Holy Spirit to enlighten their minds and tell them, say, hey, with all the protests, you are protesting about errors. This Sabbath, this Sabbath thing is something that you should protest about too. Tell the people that the Sabbath of the Lord should be kept. Right? This was not something that they protested about. And this is what Canwright is talking about here. So how is it that no one ever saw a necessity of it? until this group come up and Ellen White gets a vision, as I read before, to settle the arguments. And this is what she has always done. If you read further in, 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 in Conrad's book, I'm not going to read it, you will see that if John Luther, he, he quotes John Luther's, um, Martin Luther, sorry, statement and, 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 and relating to this, just to show that if he was around now, the great reformer who is responsible for us having a Bible, he would condemn Adventists right away for their teaching on mandatory Sabbath keeping. It is just so hopeless for them. This thing, this thing that, 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 that they are trying, they are trying to, 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 to press on everyone. Just very, it is just very hopeless for them, right? No, I'm going to continue. The enemies of the present truth have been trying to open the door of the holy place that Jesus has shut and to close the door of the most holy place which he opened in 1844 where the ark is containing the two tablets of stone and which are written the ten commandments by the finger of jehovah satan is now using every device in this sealing time to keep the minds of god's people from the present truth and to cause them to waver now here she's talking about sealing time you know so the Seventh-day Adventist Church in her time really believed that the coming of Christ was very, very, very near. And she believed that God was sealing, the seal, was sealing his people in that time. And over 170 years has passed and that sealing hasn't finished. <laughs> that sealing hasn't, uh, hasn't finished as yet. So if she was really true that it was, if it was true that it was sealing time in her day. I, I would not be able to do in this video right now. For that would have been long finished by now if God was really sealing his people at that time. So this is a false prophecy of her, one of the many. I'm going to do a video on her false prophecies, but I'm just pointing out this one, uh, this one for now, right? So I'm going to continue now. I saw a covering that God was drawing over his people to protect them in the time of trouble. And every soul that was decided on the truth and was pure in heart was to be covered with the covering of the Almighty, of Almighty God. Satan will be permitted to work also. I saw that the mysterious signs and wonders and false reformation would increase and spread. The reformations that were shown me were not reformations from error to truth. My accompanying angel bade me look for the travail of soul for sinners as used to be i looked but could not see it for the time of their salvation is past so her angel told her to look for the travail of soul 
for sinners as used to be. And she said she looked but could not see it. For the time for their salvation is past. Right? So Ellen White is saying that there, were, there was no more salvation for anyone. Right? Remember, you know, she said that it is now the sealing time and God has shut the door of the holy place and opened the door to the most holy place. Right? So she said, there is no more salvation, salvation for, 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 for sinners that has passed already. All those who have rejected, rejected um, the, 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 the sanctuary truth of theirs. There is no more, um, no more mercy for them. Right? No more mercy for them. Now, if this is true, that there is no more salva um, salvation for sinners, that would mean that every Christian after 1844 has perished. That is what it means, you know. No, sorry, not every Christian. Everyone after 1844 would have, would have perished. There will be no more opportunity for anyone who is a sinner to come to Christ if what she says is true. That she look, right? But could not see it for the time for their salvation. That is sinners, you know, is past. So if what she says is true, no one after 70 uh, uh, after 1844 would be able to make it to heaven even if they repent for, for there is no more salvation for sinners right but she she realized this error and this blunder of hers you know right and so the church as well realized this error and what they did what they did right what they did here is that they tried diligently to correct it in Ellen in early 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 writings chapter one in early writings chapter one and early writings chapter early writings chapter one and early writings chapter six they created this book with an attempt to correct this mistake of hers and I'm I'm gonna say this to my viewers you will realize you if you're not an Adventist you wouldn't know this but if you're an Adventist listen to this video haven't you ever wondered why they always have new editions of book over and over again haven't you ever wondered some of them are, 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 have the same subjects and yet they are making new books new editions the reason for that is for them making new books is that whenever they discover their the, the errors they make new book new versions and modify modify the errors they make new versions and change the errors whenever they realize that ellen white made mistakes and that is why, if you look at the Conflict of the, of the Ages series, Patriarchs and Prophets to Great Controversy, those are late editions compared to the original editions. Those are late editions. The original editions contains errors, some errors in them. And so they make new editions in order to correct those errors. Right? <laughs> correct Ellen White errors, you know. While at the same time they maintain that she's a true prophet, they have to correct her doctrinal errors. Now, which prophet in the Bible makes scriptural errors and then has and then has to correct it? If she was truly inspired by God, there wouldn't be no need to be correcting anything. If she's going under inspiration, she should not make any errors for them having to correct them. You understand? And so in Holy Writings chapter 1 and chapter 6, they, 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 I'm not going to read it, but they dedicate these chapters in trying to act to correct what Ellen White says, right? You, you can read that if you're an Adventist on your own, you can read that and you'll see, you'll, you'll be able to notice when she's writing and you'll see that they put things in brackets. You understand and say, see also, so forth and so forth. That's because they are trying to correct her error. You understand? That's one of the most embarrassing statements that, that, that the Seventh-day Adventist Church has ever made. That there is no more salvation for sinners after 1844. Then why the hell am I doing this video then if what she's saying is true? That would mean that it makes no sense for me going to church for, for there is no hope for me. You understand? That is, that is essentially what she's saying in that statement of hers. And they realize this error and they make new books in order to correct these errors. Right? Now I'm going to read, I'm going to read where, where, where Ellen White herself has, 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 corrected, has corrected the error. Right?
I'm going to read where she corrected where she corrected the error. This is from Selected Messages Chapter 6, which I'm going to post on the description here as well. For a time after the disappointment in 1844, this is Ellen White speaking, I did hold in common with the Advent body that the door of mercy was then forever closed to the world. This position was taken before my first vision was given me. It was the light given me of God that corrected our error and enabled us to see the true position. I am still a believer in the shut door theory, but not in the sense not in the sense in which we at first employed the term or in which it is employed by my opponents. Right? So that's where she that, that, that that's where she actually that that's where she actually recorded that she made a mistake there and, and, and she hold that in common but no she changed her views but she's saying here right that this position was taken before her first vision was given her but you realize that what I read the first set of stuff that I read it was a vision that, that, that she had to, 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 um, to endorse this shut door theory of hers so I don't know what she's saying here but it is evident that it's a vision that she got to sustain this the reason why she's saying that this position was taken before her first vision is because she knows that if persons are aware that these statements actually come from a vision, she'll be automatically disqualified as a prophet. For once you're claiming to get vision, you know, you're claiming that you're claiming inspiration, and inspiration cannot err. God cannot err. So if you really got a vision from God, then there shouldn't be any error in it for you to change it. So this is why she's saying that this position was taken before her first vision was given her. And I don't know what she's talking about her first vision, um, before her first vision was given her, but what I read was actually a vision. So this attempt of hers really to try to, to, try to excuse, uh, excuse her mistake, it, it just definitely won't work. You understand? It definitely won't work. Now, DM can write as well as, as as recorded this mistake of hers which i will read shortly in his book as well i'm going to read from dm conrad's book where he recorded this mistake of theirs you find it interesting what what dm conrad has to say trust me you'll find this very interesting Now, here's what Conrad has to say. So the Adventists at first adopted the sanctuary theory to prove that the door of mercy was shut in 1844, a theory which Mrs. White and all of them held at that time. Here is my proof on this point. And he quotes from Ann Arbor, Michigan, December 1, 1887. This is an article. In the DM Conrad, it was written to him. I kept the seventh day nearly a year, about 1848. In 1846, I explained the idea of the sanctuary in an article, in an extra double number of the day star. Sin, sinati, O. Oh. The object of that article was to support the theory that the door of mercy was shut, a theory which I and nearly all Adventists who had, who had adopted Willa's, Willa Miller's views held from 1844 to 1848. Yes, I know that Ellen G. Harmon, now Mrs. White, held a short door theory at that time. Now listen to Mrs. White. Topshan May, April 21, 1847. The Lord showed me in a vision more than one year ago that Brother Crozier had the true light and the cleansing of the sanctuary, etc. And that it was his will that Brother Crozier should write out the view which he gave us in the day star, February 7, 1846. I feel fully authorized by the Lord to recommend that, ex that extra to every saint. Right? So he continues to say, here you have the origin and object of that sanctuary theory. Before me lies the present truth, 
volume 1, number 6, December 1849, by James White. The shut door explained is the leading article in Leviticus 16, verse 17, that when the high priest entered the most holy, there could be no more pardon for sin. On this day of atonement, he is a high priest for those only whose name are, is, are inscribed on the breastplate of judgment. Page 44. No more salvation for sinners is what their sanctuary theory was then used to prove. As I was telling you, the whole volume is full of these ideas. No more salvation for sinners after 1844. This is what Talmud is talking about. The argument from the type on this point was right in the type. No sin could be confessed and conveyed into the sanctuary after the high priest entered the most holy. And here he quotes Leviticus 4, 1 to 7, 16, Leviticus 16, verse 17, 23, and 24. So if this was a type of the entrance of Christ into the most holy in 1844, then truly the door, the, the, the door of mercy did close there, and all sinners were lost. The now, as evidence that this is a false, false prophecy, I'm here and I know that I have been saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. That's evidence of their false prophecy. I'm a sinner who, give, who gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. So if what they say is true, then I'm going to hell even though I accepted Christ. For after 1844, no more salvation for sinners. This is one of their most embarrassing statements that they made pains to try and correct. Yes, Ellen White endorsed it, and she endorsed it with vision, thus proving that she's a false prophet. Right? No. I'm going to read. No, I'm sure in one of my videos. I'm going to point in the description here which video that was stated, where I showed that, that William Miller condemned all of these teachings. He doesn't buy the bridegroom theory. He doesn't buy their shut door doctrine. He doesn't buy their investigative judgment. He doesn't buy the whole Sabbath argument. He doesn't buy none of these theories. I'm going to post in the description area which video I had actually, I had actually recorded those so that you can go back and look at it. And you see, Willa Miller have sense enough to know that these are garbage. That these are erroneous teachings and garbage that should be dumped and burned. You understand? He had the sense to know that this, that they, that they are spouting and teaching is rubbish. Right? And he had the honesty enough to say that it's rubbish. And so he, the father of this movement, didn't accept this nonsense. Praise be to God that he didn't. Now, one more thing left for me, for, 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 for me to read before I end this video. I'm going to show how this bridegroom theory, or how this is connected to their bridegroom theory as well. And then after I finish, share that, then I'll close this video. Now, what I'm going to do instead is instead of reading anything, I'm going to post it in the description area, post some quotes for you to, for you to read for yourself wherein you will see how 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 this short door theory is connected to the bridegroom theory as well both of which are connected to the investigative judgment and the cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary i will also show you where ellen how ellen white modifies this teaching right i will show you where 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 where, where ellen white where ellen white has had has has corrected has corrected this teaching as well right i'll show you where she corrected this teaching instead of instead of instead of actually reading it right so that being said i end what i'm saying here on this short door theory right and this brings us to the, this, this brings us to the end of this aspect of Adventist examination. What I will be doing in upcoming videos is to go directly at the law. 
right now i do hope that you enjoy this video right as per usual like comment where necessary subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon so that you can receive notifications whenever i make new uploads and last but not least share this video with whom you know will benefit from a video like this bye bye now